I'm world champion Joey Mantia here with episode one of Skate Tips, a series dedicated to teaching you how to skate faster, longer. Today's episode is focused on the holy grail of inline speed skating, the double push. In this video, I'm going to define the double push, explain compression and how to use it, show you what not to do, teach you how to use your hips, talk about the importance of core activation, and finally provide you with a step-by-step -step guide. And as a thank you to the community that has shown me so much love and support, this series is and always will be free. The term double push is one that every skater knows but very few actually understand, and for good reason. When you see someone who does it well, it's nearly impossible to pick out exactly what they're doing, you just know it looks great. And when you think about the name double push, your mind automatically assumes you should be pushing twice, right? Once with the outside edge, flip it over, and again with the inside edge? Well, not exactly. The truth is the double push really isn't a push at all. It's a compression of your wheels into the surface and a manipulation of your edges under load using just your core and hips. Now that probably sounds really complicated, but I'm going to break it down in simple terms that you can easily understand so you can apply the double push correctly to your own skating. Let's start off by slowing this clip down and talk about exactly what's going on. The easiest way to understand compression is to think about the shape of your wheels. Looking directly from the side, they're circular. When you apply compression, you're just squishing them down into the surface more than your body weight naturally would, making the bottom part of each wheel that's in contact with the ground more of an oval shape than a circle. So how do you do that? Go put a pair of workout shoes on, do a single leg squat, and once you have your balance, try to squish the sole of your shoe into the floor and hold it there for at least 10 seconds without changing your position. Stay strong, don't rock forward or backward, and don't let your hips or shoulders raise up. Now you won't actually be able to squish your shoe down, but the point of this exercise is to show you how to create the compression I'm talking about on your skates and for you to identify what it feels like when you get it right. You should feel your quads, your core, and your hips engage the most. You can pause the video here if you want to give it a shot. Now you may be thinking, this seems like a lot of pressure on my legs that might make me tired really quick. But the reality is that this type of isometric or non-moving position is absolutely required to be able to properly use your hips to create speed, and it will get easier over time the more you practice it, just like everything else. Let's take another look at the skating slowed down and talk about exactly when and how long to apply compression. Now you want to start there. The moment the wheels make contact with the surface, you're squishing them down. The amount you choose is up to you. 55% is just an example, but you want to keep that same percentage all the way till there when you finish the stroke. If you can do that, you're going to be much more efficient and effective on your skates. And the more you practice it, the better you're going to get at it. The golden rule of inline skating is that a skate will only create speed for you under compression. Now typically I'm going to show you what most skaters do. They have a huge pressure spike down into the ground like this. They let it go and then they try to get it back as they finish the stroke. It creates a lot of wild movement and really destroys the ability to have the most bang for your buck. As you can see in these two clips, this is full of upper body movement, jerky foot motions, and although you can't hear the audio, the wheels are making a lot of noise on the ground, which is not what you want. Quiet skates are faster than loud ones, typically. So let me elaborate a little bit on what I mean when I say this is bad skating. A pressure spike happens when you do this. When you put your foot on the ground and you try to push down with your big muscles and create so much compression that you can't keep up with it when you go from your outer to your inner edge, then you have a huge drop in compression. Your skate is no longer making speed for you. It starts running away, so you try to keep up with it, but you can't, and it becomes very tiring and ineffective. Now, this is the major problem people have when they're trying to double push. Okay, now back to the proper way of skating. Notice how quiet the upper body is and how smooth the motions of the skates are compared to before. This is what consistent compression looks like from the beginning to the end of the stroke, and all I'm thinking about is squishing my wheels into the surface the same amount the entire time. So now that we know what compression is and how to apply it, how do we use it to create speed? Well, when you figure out how to keep your skate under a constant compression, you can create speed using just your core and hips, letting all the big muscles take care of your stabilization, essentially priming them for a hard acceleration or a field sprint. The best way to understand how to use your hips in this way is to picture yourself in an abductor machine. And if you've never used one and have no idea what it feels like, you can just sit down on a chair with your butt at the very edge and your knees together. In a smooth motion, use your abductor or your hip to move your right knee outward so your foot traces a quarter circle on the floor. Reset the starting position and repeat the process with your left knee. It's that simple. This will bring your edge from an outer to an inner when you're on your skates, and if you manage to keep constant compression, not adding or taking anything away, it will be a smooth controlled motion that will create speed for you. Let's take a look. 
When the compression is done correctly and at the right time, this little underpush motion is the result. From there, you just keep the squish consistent and use your hip to move your knee out away from your body in a controlled motion. You should feel the resistance of the wheels creating speed for you if done correctly. Then the process is just repeated again and again. Keep in mind, this is the method for marathon type skating where you need the most fuel economy but no aggressive burst and speed. I'll cover what to do in a field sprint or hard acceleration later in the video. Now that you understand the hip motion to create speed, let's talk about the last piece of the puzzle that needs to be present for all of this to work, core stability. Once you nail down compression and understand how to use your hips to make speed, you have to pay attention to your core so that any lean in the system helps generate forward momentum. Well, what does that mean? In simple terms, if you go stand in a door opening and put one foot in the corner and your opposite shoulder against the opposite side of the door frame, you should be able to hold a straight line without breaking at the hips. When done incorrectly, it looks like this. Engaging the core properly and keeping a straight line from your foot all the way to your shoulder will ensure that your edges are moving smoothly and that all gravity is assisting your forward momentum. When you break at the hips, your skating will suffer dramatically and your efficiency could drop by up to 50%. Okay, so now we know how to use the double push to skate economically, but how do you use the technique to go faster? There are two things you can manipulate in the process to control your speed. The first is the rate at which you move your knee away from your body, and the second is the amount of compression you have in your wheels. Now we know keeping a steady pace, you're looking for consistency in both, but when you accelerate or sprint, you want to increase both the compression in your wheels as well as the rate at which your knee is moving away from your body as the stroke progresses but you have to do it in the right timing, otherwise it's too heavy to push or you're struggling to keep up with the stroke. Let's take a look. Now in the beginning of this clip, I'm just using the normal marathon style of efficient skating, using all the things I've already taught you, keeping the compression consistent from the beginning to the end of the stroke, not doing anything aggressive. Now I want to shift gears, so what do I do? I'm going to increase everything in the system. I increase the initial compression, meaning I'm squishing my wheels down into the ground even harder, which in turn makes moving my knee away from my body harder, but will create more speed. Then once my skate starts getting outside this hip line, I compress my wheels as much as I possibly can while continuing to control my knee movement out and away as I finish the stroke. And if I have to, I accelerate that last little bit of knee movement to keep up with the foot. This is a more tiring method than keeping the compression consistent, but it's exactly how I've maximized my top end speed and used it to win a lot of races in my career. Now don't forget about your core. Fight to keep the straight lines from your foot to your shoulder like you're in a doorway so that every ounce of your body weight is aiding your momentum. Let's take one final look at the timing of this particular method in slow motion as I walk you through exactly what I'm doing. So to reiterate, I'm looking for immediate and consistent compression on the set down. I'm keeping my core strong. I'm using the hip to move the knee away from the body in a smooth but aggressive manner. Then when the skate gets just outside my hip line, I'm squishing my wheels down into the surface as much as I possibly can while trying not to let my shoulders or my hips drop or raise. Finally, I'm just adding a little acceleration in my knee movement away from my body until the stroke is finished. When done correctly, you get a huge boost of controlled speed and time just seems to slow down, making it much easier to put your recovery foot on the ground smoothly so you can effectively transfer all the momentum you just created. That's going to do it for this episode of Skate Tips. What is the double push and how do I do it? I'm Joey Mantia. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a little thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to keep up with all the latest skating tips.